I guess I've been doing this my whole life. I sold my first painting when I was 11 years old. It was for Hot Rod Cartoon Magazine. Uh, I had my mom sign it so it looked like an adult did it, and they sent me a check for $50. I was hooked. I knew this is what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. found that I was very good at it very early. We're all recognized, I guess, for whatever our strengths are when we were children. All my homework was illustrated. My math homework, my history homework, my book reports. It always had the drawing or something to go along with it. I was fairly self-taught. No one really taught what I wanted to learn. Realism had grown way out of fashion. Luckily, when I moved down to Dallas to study, and I really learned the business of being an illustrator, the guy I studied with said, I'm not going to teach you how to paint, but I'm going to teach you how to think. Learning to see masses, learning to see shape, composition, be a better storyteller. I think every artist, really, creativity comes out of a search, comes out of a search for a self-discovery, also a redemption, a certain amount of redemption. We're looking for redemptions, and it comes out through our work more than anything else. It's amazing how visually images, especially in our subconscious, come out through our dreams. And I think everything I've read about dreams is we're trying to solve problems. You know, the mind is constantly wanting to, it's trying to create less than chaos. It's trying to bring order to chaos in some way. And I, I'm still curious. I still have the energy I had as a teenager and the curiosities I had as a young child. I think what happens is our physique, our mental acuity, our physical acuity, all are growing and I don't think there are limits for us as human beings. I really don't. If it makes a mark, I use it, utilize it, have used it. The best thing I can do as a teacher is to invoke that curiosity to want to learn more. If I can at least just inspire them enough to want to be curious and learn more, whatever it takes. As a painter, I'm dealing with value and color, still major plane. Those kind of large masses and shapes, like I said, keep it vague. Only when I need specificity will I bring in specificity. Otherwise, my eye on its own, it just can't help it. It's going to organize what it wants to organize and let the imagination and the eye do what they do. Composition is always the first thing I look at. I guess it's like a photographer, you're kind of, you can't help it. First, more than anything though, there's something there that I want to connect with. She's got great bone structure, those nice big lips. When she smiles, she can't help it. My philosophy as an artist, be vague until specificity is needed. Don't give away too much, you know. Don't give away your pie with the special. A good brush is one that can hold its point. It doesn't have flyaways in it, that sort of thing, too, for detail work. But at the same time, once it's gotten past that, some of these bigger brushes, they build up paint in them, and so they get stiffer and stiffer. But then they turn into great scrubbing brushes, because now it's stiffer than it would be when it was new. So you use it to even scrape paint away. And occasionally you'll see me with five, ten brushes in my hand. Arcs to lights, usually, as if I'm looking at her out of focus. And it all comes together eventually, like the photograph is coming into focus. Rembrandt's always going to be up there at the top, the way he painted. I love Vermeer for his light. You know, I love Rockwell and some of the Victorian painters for their ability to tell stories. I love you know, Mucha for his sense of design. I love Bouguereau for his facility just to paint flesh. One of the most realistic painters. Some of the modern painters, there's a, a whole group of what they call nouveau realists or nouveau realists. Realism is coming back in leaps and bounds. I want to know how things work, why they work the way they work. And I see myself in the mirror knowing I've gotten older, but I still feel so youthful. I am trying to create that same interest. And you'll find your own way because you're bringing a lot to your painting or your photography from your life experience. We share a lot of them as humans, but there are a lot of them as ones that we'll never share. You know, your love of horses. I had horses as a kid, but I still experience the horse differently than you Whether do. Whether I like it or not, I can't hide it on my sleeve. It's a little embarrassing, but... Sexual energy and passion are all tied into curiosity and energy that comes. It just takes a lot of energy to be an artist. I always tell my students they need to exercise. It takes a lot of energy to be able to stick with something anyway, and you need to be able to give it all you've got. Every artist that I've ever admired, I've found out that in some way or the other, has always been very fit. Oh, well, you know, so and so is a better drawer, or you know, or you find that I like softball better, or I like whatever it happens to be thing that we become good at, we get recognized for. That's what we want to do. Draw, 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 and then draw some more. Every day I draw from observation, I draw from my imagination, I draw. It's the common language that every artist must have. Whether you're a photographer, whether you're a painter, a sculptor, there's still the one common language drawing. Because if you do it physically, where you have to do it in the drawing, it'll translate into the finished project. And after a while, you won't need to draw every time, but you need to be able to draw first. 
when I need to bring something out or I need to just make myself get a job done? What is it that I can find about it that really turns me on or I can tap into that once I get that interest, I can't let go until the job is done? Again, that's one of those things, that's that kind of magic question, when is it finished, you know, that you started off with. I can do a demo and have, so it just really depends on if it's going easy or hard. Paintings don't always go easy. You ever had a photograph you don't like? <laughs>